Hello, and welcome to episode one of Chatting Shit about the Forge Cup. Um, I'm excited to be back, excited to have a cup that, that excites me as well. Um, I've heard, heard some pretty polarising things about the last cup, but I think this cup seems to be greeted with pretty much general excitement, right? Um, joined by uh, by James, uh, by Jay, and by Jake. How are you doing, guys? Yeah. How are you? Yeah. Right. yeah. Pretty good. I've enjoyed, I've enjoyed my month off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've uh, not I'm enjoyed a single month tournament. Month. Yeah, it's not been the best month. I've, I've, I've dropped out of tournament for the first time ever. Oh, um, I've, I've still got a few games to go, but we, the finish line's in sight, right? But, um, the finish line is in sight. I've got two games to go. Nice. I, I think the, the Forge Cup is, I think it's. Doing a nice job of building some excitement levels back up. Right? Do, do you guys agree, or have you got, got any got any overall thoughts? It looks uh, like it'll be a lot wider than than Firefly was. It means that there's more than you know eight things to pick from. Yeah, like the white lists and point kind of team builds and stuff like that. That's like that's my jam. That means I can use six teams with completely different ones in every team. And just have a laugh. Yes. Nice. Um, well, you're up first with your pick uh, today, Jake. So let's, uh, let's crack on. Right. Yeah. So um, I was talking about this the other day how much I have missed using this Pokemon. Uh, and that is uh, Alola Marowak. I didn't quite get enough time to prep. So I don't know what Pokedex number it is, but it'd be fun. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, Alola Marowak. Um, everyone knows what Alola Marowak is good at. Um, but, obviously, next week it also gets um, the shadow form that we're allowed to do, which is where I think it's going to become even more interesting. Um, so, just a couple of brief pickups that the shadow one does. Um, I'll, we'll debate on whether you want to go shadow bone or shadow ball later, but couple of things that the shadow picks up um, is you've got a beedrill in um, with ball instead of bone because you don't like you don't get outdone by the um, the drill run and then a big one uh, a new araquanid obviously all four of them be it I think I'm not sure if araquanid will be quite big this month but I think quite a few people might get new toy syndrome and they'll see that you know this is new and you know it's an eight pointer but it might be quite an interesting one for pink to pick um something that you get with um any of them except for regular Sh marowak with shadow ball you pick up frostless which you'd think you'd be beaten anyway but you know one of those ones um but yeah i really prefer shadow ball I think the the new potential. It's just it's it's the right way to go. Um, I don't know what you guys think. I'll leave that open for the floor, and then if you've got any more questions afterwards, feel free to give me a shout, and I might have some more things to say afterwards. I like I balls, balls. Balls. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay, I good, good company then. <laughs> yeah. So you both you both like ball, yeah? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So do I. Yeah. So do I. I too I, many things that bone just doesn't quite take out. Mm. But then yeah, I guess if it's if it's with the, the shadow, shadow form, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, it might make it more viable. You get the defense drop, it's going to do that bit more. So you're going to get the cheaper move. And you know, obviously, shadow balls are new, but then effectively, that 20% could sort of make bone more of a, a new option ish. So, so it'll be one thing, one thing that I know for sure that you need to do with uh bone of a ball is nidder. Queen. So you don't beat Shadow Nidder Queen with Shadow Ball, no matter what, if you've got a Shadow or um, or a regular, uh, you just don't quite get to that um, Shadow Ball. Um, obviously, that's, you know, bit inclusive. So if they land Poison, poison Fang and then uh, the Earth Power, you don't get it. But, you know, it's a bit dependent match, isn't it? I think yeah. I'd, in, this, in this cup in particular, Bone clubs, bone club is such a dire move, right? It's it's dreadful, and there's going to be a lot of normals kicking around in this cup. 
where even having don't love is as neutral damage is just it's just not going to help you, right? So I mean, I I wonder, I wonder if there's if there's um, something to be said for just just going triple uh, yeah, double double ghost and going shadow ball shadow bone because just accepting the losses that you're going to take against normals like it's not like it's um, it's not like it's seed bomb on Trevenant, for example, right? Where there's it's hitting with stab and decent power against against the things. It's um it's such a bad move. Like I mean, if we're doing that, why not go all in and kind of hex shadow ball, shadow bone? <laughs> like if you want, you know, get that ghost damage in Where? and uh, get there quicker. Yeah, yeah, was... Everyone's gonna love like a ton, so are they though? Feel... Because it's eight it's eight points, isn't it? Eight points is a lot. People, yeah, but you people can still love the sad bastards out there that are using. Was it Venture? <laughs> like it was a ten pointer. Yeah, it was still everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I think that's that's just, be popular. The GBL staple in it, so people just know it and use it. So they're like, yeah, come forward with that. I mean, you've got to run Fire Blast or whatever it is instead. Yeah, yeah, fair. that's oh, not a bad idea actually. Yeah, or get your purified. Yeah. yeah, that's not a bad shout. Yeah, purified one with return. Uh, no, I, I agree. I, I think like you really will be popular. Like when you see when you the first thing you see when you look at the whitelist is um, under those eight points. You see that big row of like, heavy hitting ghosts that that, uh, that people will worry about, and so we'll see lucky tongue and and um, munch lights and, and that kind of thing quite quite prevalently. Prevalently, I was going to say like Trevenant, but that's sort of correcting myself halfway through. Um, yeah, I, I think we'll see Lucas and quite quite prevalent. Um, Just going back to the Nether Queen matchup, I was I was curious. Um, so I've just gone on PV Pope, and in the twos you can beat it straight Bone Club. Okay, I mean that's yeah. There's the twos again, and that's uh, are they just gonna? It, it also depends on if you fall for two, um, two poison fan bits. If you call the first yeah. one, you don't need to shield. That. Yeah, then you're up as your light. Um, yeah. So yeah, the, I do ones is bait, the ones is straight shadow bone. Sorry, not shadow bone, sorry, bone club. Um, and if you call the bait, you will win that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Bit and match up, isn't it? Yeah, um, so it's not too bad. But, that, but that's what that's the beauty of AOF, I suppose. So you need, so you just need Bone Club. Who's it going on about Shadow Bone? <laughs> that's the thing. Do you, do you want to get? You, um, do you want to use the Shadow one, or are you going to use the regular? One? I think you've got to use Shadow. Yeah, I, I think if, need, if Shadow gives that Shadow Bone that extra bit, I think that could be really good. Yeah. That's my hope as well. Um, I think it's in what two, three days that we're able to get it. Um, but it's going to be a difficult one because how many people are going to have a TM Marrow app ready? That's what I was thinking. They'd see loads of people moaning about it. I, 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 missed, I missed out on Execute. I didn't have a TM Shadow ready to go, but I do have a TM Shadow Cubone ready to go. Yes, yeah, I, 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 I have a rank seven, but it's not TM, so that hurts me a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I have a shiny rank hundred. Um, well, if yours isn't the end, you can just run single move. Yeah, that's it. I that's mean, true, yeah. if we're on the days and bones, <laughs> frustration. <laughs> <both>. <laughs> yeah. Uh, frustration BM for when you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they don't know you. At least it hits the normal types. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the opponent doesn't know you only got one move. Um, yeah, I feel I, I, I'm quite excited actually to have Marowak back because I feel like it's not been viable for a while. Yeah, imagine what Marowak would have done in the last couple of. Obviously, it's not been eligible, but imagine what Marowak would have done in the last couple of months, where you've had fighters and bug steals. Yeah. Marowak would have just had a field there. Yeah, or when it and has I, been available, I'm, it's just been hard. Like, there's just been too many hard counters to bring it. Yeah, and with no, with it's no dark types this month, so that's kind of ideal time to shine, really, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I think it's going to be. I, I, I think that Marowak could be a really interesting pick 
otherwise, you know, obviously I wouldn't have said it. Um, but <laughs> it's 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 one of those ones that everyone loves. It's kind of like a self favorite, and I think anyone who's been playing for a while has got a fairly good one. And then the introduction of the shadow one in the next week or so is going to kind of swing it a little bit. If you think what um, think what happened to Drapion with the the upsurge of it when it got the shadow form. It's, I think, a similar kind of thing will happen with Marowak. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, I could see that for sure. Um, that'd make um, that'd make Holmes very happy because his pick's like pretty much the hardest counter to Marowak in the game, right? <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you're in Hex. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hex double, hex and, double ghost. <laughs> hex fire blast. Does, no, we've got frustration for that. You know, it's yeah, yeah, you've got frustration for like how many I've you know this shows how level I've learned currently at the cup. Is it four points? Four points, yeah. Marowak is four, yeah. Oh yes, Marowak's four as well. Okay. Um so it's not even that expensive, you know, relatively. Um yes, it is the second most expensive one, but we'll ignore that. <laughs> but four points isn't when you've got 17 points to go, 44 isn't you know, it's not the end of the world, is it? No. And there's plenty of viable low point picks to help you run that out even if you want to pick a, a, four, a four an eight if you wanted an eight you know if you want to do a look at them you could do your marrow like you could do your look at them and you can pick quite a few things from you your one point isn't it? you'll be happy as Larry. i'm going to be impressed to see how many literally six point teams jay comes up <laughs> wow Six or seven points, depending on. <laughs> Where's <laughs> Crawl? Yeah, it does. A, I, I'm human. Fine, <laughs> fine, dark types. Consider taking this month off as well. Oh, no, 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 no. The forged cup and steel type is banned. What? I know, yeah. <laughs> Chaos. That's furious. Yeah, it's you on the end of that fish and rods like <laughs> <Yeah>. me. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to move on to your pick then, uh, Hobbsy? Okay, um, so my pick um, has been available in the last couple of metas, um, and it's Pokemon number one six four. It's Knock Tower. Um, I I just really like it. I was, I was looking down the list. I was, there's not that many fighters in this meta, but there's like Sir Fetch knocking about, and I think like I don't know about you. When when a new meta drops, the first thing I tend to do is to type in like at counter into PV Poke and like try and get a counter user on my team. And then it seems like quite a lot of bugs as well. So I just think like yeah. Bugs, Ghost, and a couple of fighters here and there makes flying quite well, like a normal flying type, just really, really nice, I think. Um, there's an, it's really worried about the electrics, obviously, but even things like, like Frostlass, you'll win the zeros against Frostlass if you've got a good enough ranked one. So, you know, you wouldn't be that upset if Frostlass switched into you. Um, you can just about tank the Avalanche um, when they can't tank the Shadow Ball. So, you know, I, I think you just got a really good play as a real safe swap. If they if they haven't got an electric, and obviously then you just stack your team, make electric scared for the rest of your squad. I think I think the shadow ball for Frostlass is a real nice pickup, right? That's um, mm. like because it's worth. Yeah, because Nightshade never quite did it. I was no. say, Nightshade was <laughs> not was not a good move. No. Yeah, because it's worth. Yeah, it's that worth, shadow ball is so good for the coverage. Yeah, yeah, it's worth noting that it's the same points as Pidgeot, right? You can get the four points, but having. Shadow Ball, so you're not completely walled by electrics or rocks. Uh, it's, it's really nice. I think like, Noctowl loses to Pidgeot, so if you want your normal flyer, I guess it's like I always kind of try and pick Toxie because I want my fighters to beat other fighters. So if you want your normal flyer to beat other normal flyers, so that's a really niche thing. Um, you, I guess Pidgeot is the way to go. I think Noctowl, the Shadow Ball of Noctowl does some nice things here. I know Brave Bird probably knocks out a Frostlass, but... Mm. Yeah, are you, yeah. Are you gonna get to it though? That's the problem. Yeah, true. One of yeah, my first, know. one of the things I first looked at when this dropped was, um, I've really enjoyed using Heracross over the last like month or so. Um, and obviously, as you say, Heracross is not going to want to see a Noctowl. Like, it's going to see one wing attack, and it's going to go. <laughs> um, yeah, that's um, it. yeah. Is it Beedrill looks quite good? Obviously, like not so I'd be happy there. It looks like quite a few bugs in the rounds. This looks quite good. So B, B drill, I thought was an interesting one because it's it's four points, right? So that's you know it's on the more expensive end, but then there's stuff like Scolopede and Venomoth down at one point. So 
there must be there must be a lot of value to having trail run, right? I think. Um, well, I I don't see it personally, uh, given the steel types aren't on the same here. Marowak. You need that drill run yeah, for the Marowak. I suppose so, yeah. Um, for the rocks as well, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, that, that's, that's where Lockdown is going to struggle, isn't it? It's going to really struggle against your um, Graveler Gollum. That well, yeah, going to I think, yeah, Gollum might be around a bit. Yeah. Uh, well, but, people are still recommending Voltswitch at the minute, but I, I think I'd have to do a bit of a deep dive to have a look whether rollout is the way to go. Um, it's a weird yeah, one, isn't it? I, yeah, like, I think that's got play with both fast moves. And obviously, if you're not talented in that scenario, something's gone a bit wrong. So, <laughs> you know, like Gal Galvantula as well. Yeah, I think there's a few, a few things that Noctile beat. But if you if you run into a team of six that didn't have an electric, let's say they've got ice types, you're not in that bad a spot. Yeah. 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 Um, I think the thing, the difference between like, uh, Golem, Golem, and your regular like, other kind of rocks. It's like it's that double resistance, isn't it, to flying? Mm. So as soon as you see an Alolan Golem with with Noctowl, as you say, you know you've done something wrong, and you know you're not in a good place. Um, but you could do some kind of strategy where you kind of, you know, use Noctowl to lure out any anti flyer. Try and maybe do like an ABB team with two flyers. I don't know what. I mean, can you tank a move? Can you tank? I was going to say, can you tank a move from the Golem? Because it's not going to want to take the Shadow Ball really. Like Shadow Ball is still going to chunk the Golem. Yeah, you um, might force a shield. Shadow Ball does 48%. But your wing, your wing attack is doing two damage. Yeah. Two it's damage. Like, How much is the wild <laughs> charge doing from Golem? Um, 300%. <laughs> nah, 98%. 78%. Right. Yeah, it, like, it, it's pay it, but by the time it's reached the vault, by the time it's in the vault, which is all rollouts to get there, you're a bit of kills, yeah. isn't it? So you could tank one from full health but not if you're starting and you're taking a couple of fast moves but yeah like I, I don't think you need to, like if you're looking for wing cons against Gollum with Noctowl yeah you're looking so at the place. Place. yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure, yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, yeah so I'm, I'm just looking at it now and um, in the it's the only wing con you've got is in the I just think it's in the 2v zero. yeah oh, okay. Two, no, two B zero, yeah. In the where are we? In the one to zero. I oh, know Noctowl wins in the one to zero as well. You do double shadow ball, uh, and that's if they don't throw a move. That's just with Volt Switch, and you come out with twenty three HP. So I'm I'm gonna strongly suggest that you don't do that. Yeah, if that seems like what if. They, do, is that only if you shield a wild charge? Because if they shield a wild charge, then they get, probably can't tap the shadow. No, 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 that's if that's uh, that's them not throwing a move. Oh, Literally okay. just farming you down with bolt switch. <laughs> okay, right, but it well, could um, it could make a decent fine, partner for yeah. Beedrill, right? Like Beedrill could, um, could could sort of lure out those rock type things, um, make them with drill runs and, and get rid. Um, Given that we just talked about it, that might be a nice little way of playing it. Um, because I don't think we'll yeah, see, and like some... I don't think we'll see rock like... and electric on a team, right? I don't think we'll see two. Well, no, unless it's like the A graphs, yeah. Um, I think like B drill as well, people tend I know it's got drill run, but sometimes people don't mind their electrics against your B drill because bolt switch just tons. Mm. And, yeah. and yeah, and like um when it's like rock blast, you tend to outpace it to the drill runs. So yeah, it could be a good luring out option. Be drill. I'm just sick of being confusion down. Is there any confusion users in this car? Because if no. it, yeah, uh, like, yeah. right, well, I'm not bringing B drill then because I've had a whole month of just seeing my health just evaporate to confusion. Yeah. Us. Infestation B drill lad. <laughs> B drill's been, B drill's been the, the thing that I've struggled against most this month. To be honest, B drills, I just don't. Yeah, it's particularly the shadow version. I've there's not much on my team that can put much pressure onto it out logging the worm down. Um, can I, I can I play you? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Why not? Um, yeah, Beedrill, particularly in it, particularly with Galve as well. Like Beedrill Galve has been 
a real a real thorn in my side. But, um, For me, I think in just about every matchup this this month, I've somehow managed to get um, my Heracross versus a Wormadam. Every single play. You win um, the ones, it's fine. Uh, not with my moveset. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Jake's if you've enjoyed fire. If you've enjoyed Firefly, you can bring your beads over here, Galvin, your Heracross here again. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Jake's really in that struggle bug, Heracross. So uh... That's what you need. If you can run double count, you should run double count. But not if you can do struggle bug. Um, okay. Jake, do you want to move on to yours? Yeah, yeah. So mine is the Flying Scorpion Gligar. Um Dex is 207 and it's a two pointer. Um, so, yeah, there's quite a few. I haven't looked at it tons because I've literally finished work and then looked at it. So, very basic. Um, oh, several different ways you can run it because you can have it regular, purified, shadow. Uh, it's definitely, if you're having it regular, definitely better purified because returns just a better move than dig and air release. Uh, you need the night slash. For coverage because of all their psychics and whatever, um, and wing attack tends to be better in this than uh, Fury Cutter, even though Fury Cutter is technically a spammier. But I think the stab with the wing attack helps, especially with like certain matchups. Um, so the shadow is ranked about 40 places higher than the regular, um, and then on that, that's recommended with aerial ace, which is obviously a shit move, but because it's shadow, it sort of makes it. A generally okay move um, and dig is just bad as well so it's whichever you want you know you, you're losing a bit of bulk but you're gaining a bit of attack so having the two spam your moves sort of helps um, doesn't like ice because it's ground and flying so just be aware you will get melted by the likes of a frost last oh you can't hit it back but yeah. <laughs> the ice does just 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 destroys and doesn't really like water either. Um, has got some decent ish resistances with like your bug, electric, poison, fighting, and ground. Um, and yeah, you just you know play it and hope for a boost. Really, that's that's sort of yeah. <laughs> I sort of night slash spam. Give me a boost and then get the fuck out of here for a return. Uh, or use a, your shadow with air release. I think I'd probably use purified, even though it's lower rank. Than the return, there's not too many differences uh, in in the wins. It it sort of shows up a few more wins, like shadow. You pick up um, hypno and knockdown, easy more easier um, than the purified one. Um, it tends to be you've got to land the return, but you you know, you're still going to pick them up. Well, you're still going to get shields because the the, the nice slash again hypno, and depend on the hypno move set as well. If they're not running ice punch, then you shield the shadow ball, you're going to win that matchup. Uh, pretty much takes care of you know your your standards of uh, or your staples, sorry, like Nid the Green, uh, Trevenant, uh, Galve. And then you've got a couple of new kids on the block in the Arangaru and the Araquanid. So it's got some some nice little wins. Yeah, I can see it being a real nice call breaker. It's one of those awkward ones yeah, yeah. where um, like especially without a ground move, it, it sometimes loses to things on the face that you wouldn't expect. Like I'd be happy enough running a fire type into it, um, and and sort of, or, or or even a rock type into it. Like especially with it being with wing attack, which I agree is is one hundred percent the way to go. But um, yeah, things that you might expect it to deal with quite comfortably can can cause a bit of trouble. But then on the other hand, it can deal with other stuff that you might not expect it to deal with. Um, because, of, like you say, you've, you've got the spam and spam of the night slashes, or you've got a big return to, uh, to hit it with. So, um, yeah, really, yeah. And like when I added, yeah, when I added the return on PV Pope, it, it jumped up the wins by like 10% because it's just got a release and night slash on there at the minute. Uh, obviously, the meta is still relevantly new, so you know, you might not have plugged in all the numbers properly yet, but uh, yeah, the, the return just went, just added a big. Big chunk, and that was across the whole the whole meta as well, not just the core forty. So, like, you know, it's a big big chunk of wins to to add on. 
but yeah, I just, I mean, I, I'm just having a bit of nostalgia with it because I uh, smashed it in factions over the weekend and it practically solo the team, which is quite nice. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, you know, Night Flash Boost, Fury got no way, you know, Deoxys, so hello, goodbye. And it's just, it was just awesome. <laughs> But yeah, so I mean, I'm I'm currently in love with Gligar because I can't use Crawdon. Fair enough. Fair enough. But yeah, yeah I mean, like you said, then it's got there's a couple of awkward things where like you know you can lose against things that you should think it'll beat. But um, yeah, you know, again, I think like core breaker style and sort of dip, but deciding what you wanted to do with the the shadow the shadow will add more of a shield pressure than than the regular. The regular is more spam and bulk. Um, but then you know, you're going to have the spam with the other damage. You're going to lose a little bit of bulk, obviously, for the shadow. But it sort of depends what you want it to do. And then if you get the if you get the boost on the shadow, then it's just going to run ramp, rampant. So. Yeah, then things really start hurting. Uh, have you given any thought to um, frustration? I know, it's a, no. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's an awful move. But have you given any thought to dig? Yeah, it's just not. I think with access to return. You're just, on the return. Just yeah. run return. Like um and in the shadow form again, like because you're losing that little bit of bulk and dig takes a while to get to. Um aerial ace has just you know sort of improved because of the you know the added attack the and then buff, yeah. And then obviously you're getting the night slash, which is what you're predominantly gonna throw anyway, fishing for boosts. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't think I don't think for this meta, dig is gonna be needed really but I mean it's not it's not an not not an option because it depends on your team build you might need the, the coverage and I think that's yeah. why it's actually quite good because because you've got several different options you can run a purified one with dig and throw people off as well. Yeah. Yeah. If you need dig could Glisco be the way forward with Earthquake? Pro- probably but it's you lose a lot well, maybe not a lot of bulk but you do lose a, a chunk of bulk there. Yeah, I, know. I think I can't remember I like what the, it, it, was it like prismatic last year or last season? I'm sure we're, it was in like the grey slot. There was yeah, yeah. something, and I can't remember now what it was. There was something that made me run Gliscor over Gliger. There was one real win. But I think Gliger overall was like ranked better and had more wins. There was one thing I needed to beat that Gliger couldn't. Well, Obviously, it's not really very good. I can't remember what it was. <laughs> forever pass, I would have thought. Yeah, maybe forever pass in it. Obviously, with the earthquake. But yeah, I think like Bruno mentioned earlier about drill run with. Um, B drill yeah. is there something in it for ground moves? Here? Is there a reason why B drills worth so many points? Maybe that ground damage will be. Yeah, I think it'd be good once the the meta's settled, and then you can actually sort of you know assess the situation with what what people are you know, more uh, into picking. So, but no, yeah, I think it'll be a, a decent little pick, but especially for two points, the steel. Well, it's not yeah. a steel; it's it's, it's it's a flying grab. But you know what I mean. Yeah. No, <laughs> no, it's it's a nice it's a nice thing because um, if people are bringing an electric type or a, sort of a rock type, just does that an anti flyer, then all of a sudden it's not so straightforward, right? Um, I have a very specific example, but I'm going to wait roughly ten minutes to ask this because it requires Matt to have spoken about his choice first. Um, so. I'm gonna, yeah, I'll hold off on my question until then. Um, but yeah, I do, I do like, like, I do like Gaga like, because I think, as you said, that night, that night slash just spamming them out. Even if you don't want to shield them, eventually you're gonna have to just because of how quickly they're coming and that little bit of chip damage, it really does add up over time. Um, very yeah, especially if you get the boost. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what is it like? Is it a thirty percent chance? One in eight, I think, apart from unless you J. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so <laughs> one in yeah, every other yeah. Um, yeah, so my pick is uh, I I haven't done the, the research for the Pokédex number either. I'm afraid. Uh, sorry, guys. Uh, my pick is Dedenne. Um One point. I think this is an absolute bargain. Um, a fairy typing is really good. Uh, so um, I particularly hate so the idea of having a, a fairy type that um, that isn't reliant on, on charm is really nice. 
um, one of those anti flyers, uh, which which is pretty cool. Um, and it's an anti flyer that isn't weak to counter as well. When you think of anti flyers, you think rock, you think uh, ice, all weak to counter. Um, there's not a huge number of them anti flyers that resist counter. Um, looking at like Frost last did any and Zappa was pretty much off the, off the top of my head. Um, so that's it's, it's got a nice little niche there. Um, and with it having play rough, which hits quite hard, um, it can. It's, it's kind of like how knocked all have now a shadow ball, like we were saying earlier, right? It can, it, it can hurt things that it's not supposed to hurt. Like if you're stuck in versus a grass type, assuming it's not a, a Venus or a rose bridge, but it's poison as well. Or, um, play rough's going to hurt that a lot. It's going to hurt Quagsire. It's going to hurt. Um, what else? What else? Because it diggers be like, or well, maybe not when it diggers be diggers be bulky, right? But it's it's going to hurt a lot of stuff that you would expect uh, to be comfortable versus electric types, and they still will be fairly comfortable, all things considered. But if it comes down to an end game situation uh, where neither of you are on full health uh, and you can beat them to a player, off, you can get them to a player off before they can get to their move. Uh, it might be enough to to tip the match over the edge. Uh, so that's it's really nice to have that versatility as an electric type, um, which a lot of them don't have all the time. Um, yeah, that's, that's about it, really. Um, I'm a bit cautious. I think poison might end up being quite good in this meta, um, so that worries me a little bit. Um, but there's plenty of good options for anti poisons as well. Um, so as long as you're building a balanced team, I don't think it should be too bad. Um, so yeah, that's my uh, that's my ode to uh, ode to the Dene. Anyone's got any any thoughts? So now, now I'm going to ask my question of uh, the Dene versus uh, versus Gligar. How are we faring? Yeah, because well, you'd think that a ground type would beat the Dene. Yeah, so this, but, is, what this is it's a great example of one of those awkward matchups for Gligar. So the Dene wins zeros, um, and then after that, it's Beatty on both sides. Um, yeah. You know, if if you're running the shadow uh, Gligar with um, Aerial Ace, there's, there's no way you're going to flip that because you're relying on the return for the neutral damage. So, um, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a great example of, of what I mean about for, for both of those mods, really. Um, not, you know, not that Gligar is bad because of it. I think it makes Gligar, I think that sort of thing makes Gligar good, really. I think. I mean, they pair well together, to be fair. So, uh, yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah Glygar yeah. resists the, the poison and the ground, so... And then the weakness to water that it gets, you get beaten by uh, the electric. Yeah. Yeah. But then... I, I, I was thinking... Ice types as well. There's, I, don't, yeah. I don't think there's loads of ice types here. You might, we might see some lapras, I think. Um, yeah. I think a bomber, a bomber snow, a bomber snow, and um, frost lass and nine tails are all up there in the eight pointers, mm. and then we've got what uh, dugong in the fours, lapras as well. I think I don't know how many of those you're going to see. No, to be honest with you, I think lapras maybe. Lapras might be fairly decent because that water coverage and just the bulk of it. Budget um, wall rain. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which I think the Dene would definitely enjoy. Yeah. Um, I think pure ice types or like, you know, the ice waters, they're gonna be your uh, your ones to aim for. It, it is a little um, it is a little problematic to Dene because it doesn't always beat things as comfortably as you might want them to, because You've not got vault switch, so you don't have the ability to farm stuff down, and you, you often have to throw. Th you, have to, you often have to throw a move to finish something off at low health, which is a bit annoying. And also discharge. It's also, it's not the bulkiest. It's not. It's not. It's some no, similar. It, it similar hits hard, though, it, it yeah. hits nicely. Yeah, it hits nicely then. Uh, um, one thing that I was actually considering before I picked Marowak was that I was looking at Polyrath. Um, and I think Polyrath could be all right here. And then obviously the Dene would really do a number on that. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I quite like the Dene as a pick. 
Um, I might actually look into doing that as well. I wonder how it pairs with Marrow. I'll get to that later, but you know, yeah. Um, um, probably quite yeah. well. Probably quite well, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, I think I mean, all, you... of our, all of our picks that we've spoken about here could actually make it. Yeah, there's, there's some solid synergy. <laughs> yeah. But throw beads over there for good measure. Know, That's uh, you know. I've got the ice coverage, you know. The ice, you know, you know, ice type. You just uh, beat it with fire and frustration. <laughs> beat it with fire. Yeah, yeah no, me, um, me and Jay together might struggle against like a frost last. Or <laughs> not, or not <laughs> One of us will take a shield, though it's fine. <laughs> uh, Bomber Snow versus Noctowl can't be that. Bad. Yeah, yeah, it's not that bad for Noctowl, is it? I bet. Yeah, not Tal I'm pretty sure not Tal yeah, wins. Yeah, probably outbulk. I think yeah, that's all. I think Shadow is probably yeah, Shadow Bombers. They probably deals quite well. Yeah, twos though. Twos is where we look. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, um, I think Dedenne is a really good pick. Um, that as we, we we all saw it earlier about um, about fighting types, um, and obviously a fairy with that uh, player of coverage. It's going to be pretty useful against that. Um, maybe your only, your only worry, probably that toxic croak or something. Um, yeah. Kind of a big problem for you there. And another thing um, I quite like about yeah, it is like it. another thing I quite like about it is. Um, so we mentioned earlier about how I think we mentioned earlier about how Iraq when it's new, so we might get a new bit of new toy syndrome, and um, completely destroys that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and it's kind of that bug buzz resisted. Uh, oh yeah, it's not really much. Um, it, it kind of does the same. It's a nice core breaker, similar to Pidgeot and, and Noctowl, really, in that it, it breaks up um, a record and encounter, um, which is which is nice. Like, but the really, um, the really bulky stuff, um, I think, is like like a record. It, it's important to have counters to them that are versatile and can't be. Overrun by other stuff, like particularly stuff that's um, known to be good, like counter or like razor leaf or, or charm. Yeah. It's, it's nice to have uh, a, str- a strong uh, variety of, of counter uh, of counters to uh, to the big stuff. Just to, just to, just so you don't fall apart to the, the less. Like, yeah, you don't want to over specialize against some things and then fall apart on the back end, right? That's what I'm trying to get at. That's, <laughs> um, that's what I'm yeah. to say. And I think the DNA is a the DNA is a nice option for doing that. I think one of the the things that I just realised is that between the four of us, no one's bringing an arachnid because I don't think they've got any play against Marowak, the DNA, Guy Glygar, and uh, Noctowl. Well. That's all right. Yeah, that's true. That's true. How to beat a rack when you're one over. Yeah, get rid of your new toys. Yeah. So yeah, the, this is the uh, the seal of approval. Everybody bring a rack when it. Everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have the anti a rack when it over here. Well, we're well, we're on the subject. Six that I've got, but um, I don't know whether to build which one. These have all had the stats on them. Well, well we're on the subject. Oh gosh. Gotcha. Do any of you think what do any of you think to a rack when it here? In this uh, meta, this meta. I watched it in um didn't one of the guys go quite far in Lil using one. I, I think two guys, I think both find this guy used it, I think. So that's what I heard. Yeah, so we're on a few matches on stream on the Lil stream. It looked well, it just looked really good. But I've not built mine yet. Oh, I've not got any good ones. Um uh, didn't manage to get anything worth using. I mean, um, I don't think I don't think I'm t- I'm tempted by his talent flame, and I don't even know if that's in this call. It is. <laughs> it's an it is. Pointer, I think. Eight eight pointer. Pointer. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. You have Fletching Dirt um, Charizard for one point, though. <laughs> one of the things that I'm really tempted by, uh, it's you know massive new toy syndrome. Uh, I just got a Tapu Fini. They got to like fourteen eighty, um, so that's that's kind of my. I'm eyeing it up, but I also know that it's probably not going to be very good. How many points is that? Eight. Uh, eight. Yeah. Oh, is it? Fucking hell. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's, I don't think it's worth it. <laughs> it's got I, a bit I think of it's, typing, isn't it? I think it's the accessibility yeah, stuff that I imagine it's there for. Right? Um, yeah, budget as it. I mean, what about I was, the, well, um, I was surprised that Salazzle was put into two, into two points, though, for that reason. I was about to say, like, I mean, I've got a Salazzle 
I've got three. I've got like I've, I've had three females now. I mean, I only had one male. I mean, I've had a oh. bit of a nice little streak there. <laughs> well, I need, I need that off you. Yeah, yeah I'm not well, I mean, candy, but no females yet. Yeah, I've got, I've got two spare. Cool. Hit me up. Right. Um, <laughs> I might actually be coming to Liverpool this week, so I'll let you know. <laughs> Sound. Yeah, uh, Brewer. Can I just say as well? You look a lot like PVP Steve today. I do a bit. Like just, just <laughs> recently had the shout. Just uh, the shower, like the hair, the hairline was the same. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we need we... the uh, good day, Bellas. Oh, yeah, no. Can you just do the accent for the rest of the uh, the rest oh, of the video, please? Mark? No, no, no. I wouldn't, oh, no, wouldn't I, do that, I, Steve. I, 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 don't, I don't think so. Like, uh, <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't go on, Brewer. No, I could go on, Matthew. He'll be asking me to do Quagsire and Sudo Udo impressions next. Like, I know, that's yeah. Phil. That's Phil. Yeah, that's, that's Phil. Phil. That's only Phil for them. <laughs> so I was thinking about picking Sudo Udo today, and then I thought, well, actually, let's leave that one, leave that one on the board just in case, right? That was uh, <laughs> one of the nice people. Yeah, Joyce. I've also just realised that Denny is only a one pointer. Sorry to you know actually yes. get back on topic. Yeah, no, but <laughs> I've only just yeah, uh, I've only just realised it's one pointer. Um, that could be, you know, when you when you've done your your team building, you've got you know you're at 15, 16 points, and you just need something to give you that little bit of extra coverage. And I think that the Denny is probably one of the better choices down in that one point zone. Because what really else are you going to reasonably pick? And it's and it's unique um, as well because it's not like there's much, it's not like there's much in the upper tiers that are strict upgrades on it. Like, I suppose you've got Zapdos and Galvantula, which are sort of similar in that they're electric and resist counter. But yeah, they're, they're, you know they're pretty okay. different ones, really. Is it like are you looking at it more in the safe swap kind of category? Yeah, it could it could be like it's. I, I think it has plenty of versatility. Like you can lead it and. Fire off a discharge and then dip because to make that to make the one you've led against easy to deal with later on because it's it's so fast to get to its, to get to its charge moves. Um, yeah, it's, it, it might be a manageable situation like if you've got hard counters to something in the back. Um, yeah, I, I think it has all sorts of play really. Yeah. yeah. Just a quick, what? How many thunder shocks is it to a discharge? Five. 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 All right. Okay. Yeah. Um. Just what's? I'm just gonna quickly look up what the the Golbat the Denny matchup is like. The longer it goes um, on, the more it suits Golbat. Yeah. Um. And I reckon it'd be close because you you, yeah, you don't shield the first. You don't shield the first poison fang. So the Denny wins CMP. Apparently. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Well, yeah. Golbat's fairly bulky. Wow. Yeah. I, I, for some reason in my head, I've always thought Golbat was quite attack loaded, but no, it's, uh, it's not even close. Yeah. Um, also beats Golbat. Like Marowak. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, weirdly enough, Marowak actually does uh, somehow. Uh, but you need the shadow, so get your shadow Marowaks. Um, but yeah, I I quite like that. I like the idea of um, rounding out your team with some of the, the lower pointers. Yeah. It, it yeah, seems need at least a one one pointer. Yeah. yeah, it yeah. seems very undervalued to me. Just that. Um, there's, a, there's a few things that jump off the page. Obviously, Raichu, but like uh, oh. in... <laughs> Matt, naturally, Matt, I know exactly what you're going to use. Fletchinder. Fletchinder's there. The you one. go. Fletchinder's the one. <laughs> you know, yeah, I like my uh... Uh, ginger Tom, eh? Well, I have a history of using, well, I've used Tomo and Moltres in draft, right? So I'm, I'm going to get to Fletchinder at some point. Yes. <laughs> yeah. um, right, well, unless anyone's got anything more to add, we'll, uh, we'll leave it there. A decent room. Don't want to go on yeah. too long. It's a uh, decent, that's a frank discussion today, I thought. <laughs> yeah, straight to the point today, wasn't it? No, Jordan no, Sweet. No fucking around. Wanted to be chatting, chatting shit in the movie, part two. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This, this was more just like this less chatting shit and more just chatting to the point. Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's nice that what I like about this is that there's always they're always a bit varied, but you never know you never know quite what you're going to get. Um, 
that's uh, that's part of the yeah. point of it, right? Um, yeah. yeah. Some episodes are more useful than others, right? And this, this, I think, this is probably up there with one of the more more useful episodes. Um, in my <laughs> and there's mind. not many. There's, there's <laughs> not. There's not. <laughs> so if you press that like button. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's not, my there's... invite gone for next month. <laughs> <laughs> how many? How many? Uh, how many more episodes have you got this month, Matt? Uh, this and three more, I think. Um, okay, so we'll you know, one out of four—that's not too bad. Yeah, I mean, that's solid, right? That's really solid. Yeah, twenty-five uh, percent. Yeah. I thought he was going to go, this is the best forged one so far. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, technically. <laughs> it certainly is. It certainly is. All right, fellas. Thanks very much for, for joining. And uh, yeah, glad, right. glad everyone's excited right. to have an EVP again. Good, uh, yeah. yeah, man. Thanks for having us, man. Awesome. See you later, guys. See you in a bit. See you in a bit.